welcome to day 10 of 100 days of Kubernetes, the challenge where I am to learn something new related to Kubernetes across 100 days. For those who are new to my channel, welcome. I'm basically sharing my entire learning journey around DevOps. And today I'm going to be looking at deployments, specifically how to set up deployments and an according service to that. If you're new to Kubernetes, check out one of my previous videos, as well as for services. There are two videos already on services. So this is the first one on deployments. Um, first, what is a deployment? Well, deployments are used to tell Kubernetes what resources, what resources do we want to have. So they are used to set up our containers and running those in pods. We have running pods set up. They know which pods should exist um, by telling them the replica set of how many pods, how many instances of a pod should exist. Um, and we'll make sure that those pods are always running. So they are responsible for our entire uh, container life cycle, pod life cycle within our cluster. Um, when you're setting up pods manually throughout the like without deployments, it can easily lead to human error. You're making mistakes. You have, might forget, uh, mess up some names or forget to configure it correctly. So through deployments, we can standardize that. Now, deployments are different to services. Um, deployments are used uh, to make sure that the resources that we want to have in place on our cluster are there versus services are used to provide uh, access to our containers and configure the, the communication between our pods within our cluster. So with, between the different nodes and the pods within the cluster. Now, first off, if you're like me and you're just getting started learning something new, it's likely that you will run into situations where you don't know how to do something properly. So that was the first time that I tried to set up um, a pod or deployment of, a, of pods you know, from scratch. So as you can see, it led up to a bunch of different errors and kind of me trying my way around it. However, by doing so, I learned I learned how to do it and I learned more about um, the pod itself and the YAML syntax than I would have without running into those errors. And as you can see, this was all me trying to out what I wanted to show you today in the video. And at the end, it worked and I had those pods running and then deleted them. So let's, let's walk you through it, what I actually did here. Now you might remember that I have I have this public Notion page where I record all of my notes and you can follow along on the written format of it here. So first off, this is if you check it out below, which links like what I created, the resources and so on, um, as well as the commands that I will be using and more information on deployments. So first of all, I created here this uh, the deployment YAML and we have here Again, we have our API version of, of this resource that is used. There. And then we have the kind, which is of the kind deployment. We have the metadata, and this is the name of our deployment. Now, in the specification, we tell it that the replica set is set to two. Then we have our selectors, which is supposed to run the uh, React application. And the React application is basically here set in the template. Um, we set the same um, key and value to run the React application. Um, that's basically React application refers here to the name. And here we have our image. Now the image is within my Docker Hub. So you can find it there too. It's of, um, this is my username. Then um, if you're familiar with Docker, you know that this is um, the image and then the tag of the image. And I have it on port 80 and the image port policy is always. Now I'm gonna probably expand on this throughout the next <laughs> days, um, but this is like the basic setup that I created. So as you can see here, by looking at kubectl get uh, config get context, we can see that I'm on my MicroKids cluster, which is my local cluster running. Um, you can set it up. Through, it's, there's, a there's a previous video link below where I set it up. So check that out if you are unsure. You can also use Minikube or anything else. I could also use my Google Cloud cluster. And then I can create my deployment. So I say cube column um, create, and then the file that I want to be using, my pod deployment.yaml does not exist oops because I did not do that so it tells me that the deployment has been created so I can look for kubecar get 
deployments and that will return my deployment now it tells me that um, <laughs> that zero out of the two pods out of the two replicas that I want to have are uh, running so zero are available I can also so the deployment is responsible for creating the pod that is here right so I can look for kubectl get pods and in this case they are now running I can look for the deployment again and now as you can see it's updated it tells me those are up and running um, now next I want to have my service so the service I defined it here um, it's of type node port. I didn't look at ingress yet. If you setting up access to your cluster, you would want to use ingress instead of exposing your cluster to the outside world through node port. But in this case, I'm using node port. It's my local cluster. It's everything will be locally on my machine. So type service here, I have the metadata. And as you can see as a label, I have run react application. So the label tells the service it has to take care of exactly this application here um, that's defined through the label so we can set up our uh, service by just saying kubectl and then expose and we want to have deployment and then our deployment name in this case it's react application is our deployment name you can see it here in the deployment name as well so we're just going to set that up Oh, and it tells me the service already exists. So um, I actually did the same before, so I didn't delete the service. I should have probably before uh, of while cleaning up the cluster. But as you can see here, the service already exists. So I can look for kubectl, get services, and then it will tell me I have two services, one called Kubernetes and one called React Application. So how do I access now this cluster? Well, I have here my cluster IP. And if I look for it, I will actually see that this is like here, this is the cluster IP. And through that, I can now access my application. Um, this is the running application. It's just a basic React app that uh, loads all the stories from Hacker News. You can also access that on the public Notion page. It's linked there. Um, however, what if I want to get the information differently because imagine I have a bunch of different services with different IPs um, that that might be not too convenient to get the specific IP. So I could use this command that I found. Hmm. You just Google things and you find weird commands <laughs> and I can just look for my service also called react application. And then I have here all the information of this service and here again, I have my cluster IP and then I have, um, what else do I have? So I have the entire information on my service that all the information that is available on it. <laughs> um, when it was created, the default namespace, um, the resource version, some stuff that I don't know of yet. <laughs> um, so yeah, and it tells me here it runs the uh, with the selector react application and here I have again my port my it runs TCP and my target port so that is it so this is it I hope it was useful if it was please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for future videos and similar tutorials also let me know in the comments if there's anything else I should be looking at or anything you would like to see in those across those 100 days we also have a DevOps learning group so if you would like to join that just message me on Twitter and I can add you just want to make sure that it's not just publicly accessible also keep in mind just try out different things just have a look maybe at the previous videos or at other videos and tutorials across the internet. There are so many free online learning resources that you can just check out and try out. This took me like, I guess, 30 minutes with all the readings and so on to set up and you get a lot out of it. So just play around with it. There's nothing really that can happen on your local cluster and you get a lot of learning experience from it. I hope to see you next time. Have a lovely day. Bye bye. Okay, good. Done.